Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a little bit different of a video. I want to show you five different ways that you can color your stamped images. Now I am using this One in a Chameleon stamp set from Lawn Fawn. Uh, I thought it would be easier to show all of these techniques on a simple image that was easy for coloring, not a lot of shading required, and I've gone ahead and stamped this out in five different swatches, and I've labeled the top of each swatch so that we could remember which mediums we used on which stamps. Now, the technique number one, or the first way that you can color your stamped images is by colored pencils. Now these are Prisma, Prismacolor color pencils. They are easy to use, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that you do wanna keep them sharp. So go ahead and sharpen them before you're coloring. Now I did speed up a lot of the footage here. We're doing a lot of coloring today, and I thought it would be better just to keep this moving along, so I sped it up. But my first image here, I just want to show you how you can use three different tones of the same color to kind of get some shading on your image. So I like to take my colored pencils and just lightly put down color on the whole image using my lightest color. And then I come in with my mid-tone color and add a little bit of shading where I want it to go. Then I'll go ahead with my darkest color. So I have my darkest here, color here, and I'm just adding a little bit more shading where I want it to be darkest. Now once you have that darker color on, you can go back in with your mid-tone, start to kind of blend that out, and then you can go back over it with your lightest tone of color. And this is pretty much the basic way that I color most of my images. I go in with light, mid-tone, dark, and then I go back to mid-tone and then to light. So that first image there is colored just using one color, it's just green, and three different shades of green and blending them together. So for this image, I thought I could show you how you can use just one color, one colored pencil, and kind of get a different look. So I am going in and I'm just adding color over the whole thing, very lightly coloring. And then you can come back where you want the shading to go and color it by pushing a little bit harder and making a darker shadow so you can get a different tone on tone kind of look just by the pressure that you're using while you color. So that was just one colored pencil for that image there. Now for your colored pencils, if you wanna blend the color together, you can. I'm gonna be using yellow and red. So I'm using two different colors and they're going to blend together. So I used yellow on one end of our little chameleon and I'm coming in with red on the other end and I'm just overlapping these colors in the middle. So once they overlap, they're going to create sort of a reddish orange color. And I wanna blend these colors together a little bit better. So after I have my first application of color on, I'm going back in and I'm putting more color on, pushing just a little bit harder, and definitely trying to get those colors in the middle to blend. And I want them to kind of blend out and look a little bit more natural. Now, I do not own any Gamsol, but I know a lot of people like to use colored pencils and then blend out that color with Gamsol. Gamsol is a solution that will kind of break down the color in your colored pencils and spread it around on your paper and get more of a, a smooth look. I don't have any Gamsol. I've never used it before, so I didn't want to recommend it without using it, but I know a lot of people love to use it with their colored pencils. So definitely check that out if that is an option for you. Now the second way that you can color your images is with alcohol markers. Now I use style file markers. They have a chisel end and then they also have a brush end. These are a little bit cheaper than some other alcohol markers and I find they work, really work well for me. Now that container that you see there that is full of markers, those are the only markers I have. Those are the only colors I have and they've been working for me so far. I do wanna fill in some of my gaps by getting a few more colors in the future. But for now, I have a good little collection to start with and they, they work for me and I love that the price point is a little bit cheaper. So I'm just showing you my basic way that I color. So I'm just using a green for this chameleon like I did with my colored pencils. I came in with my lighter shade and I'm coming in with a darker shade to do a little bit of shading. And then you want to go back with your lighter colored or your lighter markers, excuse me, and just blend out those darker shades. Now, alcohol markers, they do kind of work by the alcohol. 
I believe the lighter colors have more alcohol content than the darker colors, so those are a little bit easier to blend. And I find I get better results when I use my lighter colors. So if you're a beginner like I am, definitely try the lighter colors first before getting into a lot of the darker ones. So I just did green on that first chameleon, and on this last one I'm using two different colors. So I'm coming in with a light blue on the back, and then I'm bringing a yellow on the front, and when they cross together in the middle, they're creating a really fun green. Now these colors blend together really well. You might have to go over them several times to get that blend that you want, but they always work really well for me. I have fun with them, and I like the results. Now if you want to go back in after you color your image and add a little bit of detail, you absolutely can. I'm just adding a few dots on the back of this little chameleon to make it look like he's got some bumpy skin, some dots on his back, and he looks really cute. So my, my son is really into chameleons lately. He loves reptiles and lizards and spiders and all the yucky things. But this chameleon is super cute. I was super excited to find him at a local scrapbook shop when we went out this weekend. And I thought he would just be a perfect image to color for this video because it's an easy image to color, not a whole lot of um, really crazy shading that you have to do. And it just shows how you can color some simple images really quick and easy using a lot of different methods. So I'm again just going to color this chameleon. I'm using some reds and some pinks here, and I'm just going to keep it sort of in the same color family. I added a, on a really light pink, a little bit of a darker pink, and now sort of a reddish pink on the bottom. And then I'm going back in with my lightest color and blending it out. Now when you're blending, you might want to go back over the colors several times until you really see those colors kind of blending together. You're getting rid of some of those harsh edges and it just looks like a smooth color. I thought that was really cute and I wanted to show you now how you can use your colorless blender. Now this is just alcohol, this is not any color, and it kind of, when you add it onto your alcohol um, marker images that you've already colored, it kind of pushes away some of that color. So I'm using my, blend, my colorless blender here just to add some stripes onto this chameleon. And as that alcohol dries, the stripes will get a little bit darker, but you can definitely do different textures, different stripes, and different things on your images by using that colorless blender. You can also go back in with a white gel pen and add some detail as well. I'm adding some white gel pen spots to this red chameleon, and I think it just adds a little bit of texture and a little interest. That white from the gel pen really makes it pop, and it makes this little guy stand out and be even cuter than he usually is. So the third way that you can color your images is with these zigs or with a watercolor pen or marker or whatever you have. I like the zigs. They have a brush tip that's flexible as you can see there and um, they just add a lot of pigment to your paper. They're really bright. I love these colors. So there's a few ways you can use these zigs. This first way is I'm just brushing it onto my paper, just coloring the whole image with one color, and then I'm gonna take a darker color and just add that in for some shading. And you can definitely blend these colors together just by coloring them onto each other. Now, like I said, these are watercolor markers. What that means is they do react with water. So if you wanted to add some color and then go ahead and brush it out with water, you get kind of a watercolor effect. Now that's what I was kind of going for here with this second chameleon. I wanted to show you how you can add some color down where you want it to be darkest and then brush it out with your watercolor brush. But this is not watercolor paper. This is regular paper. So if you're using a lot of color or a lot of water on regular paper, you're not going to get it to blend very well. And you can see that that color is not moving very well. It's not moving the way I want it to. And so when you're using it on regular paper, this technique might not work quite as well. But in just a second, I'm gonna to move to watercolor paper and you'll see how the results are so much better when you're working on watercolor paper if you're using this technique with your zigs. So here I'm putting a little bit of color down on my watercolor paper and I'm just putting it down where I want it to be darkest because wherever you add that color, it's going to be darkest. Now I'm taking my water brush and I am just pulling that color out from where I applied it 
and you can see that color start to move. These zigs are really fun for these different techniques um, and different watercolor coloring, if that's what you like to do. And I'm kind of pulling out, pulling out that color in circular motions and just really trying to move it up to the top. So it, it kind of creates its own little ombre effect where it's darkest, where you added the color, and it gradually gets lighter towards the top. And it's a really fun way to add a little bit of an interesting coloring to your images. Um, and these zig markers are just really fun to use. I don't have the biggest set, but there are more colors than the set that I showed you. So after you're done watercoloring, you can even hit your image with a heat tool and add in some more color. So I'm going to add in a little bit of blue with my green and you can see you can get these colors to really um, start to just blend in with each other. So I'm adding just a tiny bit of blue so I'm going to get a little bit of a bluish green on the bottom of these chameleons and then you can go back in with your water brush and just brush them out. Again, I'm using circular motions, I'm just taking my time to really trying to get that color to move and to fill in this whole image. And like I said, this is just a fun way to color. Definitely take your time and experiment with any of the methods that you have. Um, coloring can be a fun, relaxing way to just stamp out a bunch of images and color them and use them on cards for later. So the next way that you can use um, different mediums for coloring is watercolor. So this is a little bit similar to the pens, only it is not in a pen. Um, I'm using my Brutus Monroe Aqua Pigments and my Royal and Langnickel watercolor brush. And you just also need a little bit of clean water. And this is a really easy way to add some color to your images. So my Brutus Monroe watercolor uh, the aqua pigment, it is a liquid watercolor. I like to let it dry in my palette and then I just pick up that color again when I want to use it again with a little bit of clean water and that's what I'm doing here. Now I'm adding this watercolor to a dry piece of watercolor paper. I have not added any, any water, any liquid to this paper before I started adding my color. I'm just picking up my color and I'm adding it to where I want it to be darkest on my chameleon and then I am going to go and blend out this color as much as I can. Go ahead and add all of your color first and then if you want to get it to start blending, add a little bit more water and just pull that color up where you want it to go. Kind of like with the zigs, you are moving that pigment around. It reacts with water, so use a little bit of water to move it around. Add some more color back in if you want a little bit more shading, a little bit more contrast and just play around with it and have fun. Watercolors are very forgiving. Um, they're reactive with water, so if you wanna take some color away, add some water. If you wanna put some more color back in, add some more watercolor, and just have fun with them. So I'm just kind of blending out this color. Now this is just one color that I used on this chameleon, and you can see you get some darker shading on the bottom and lighter on the, on the top. And you can definitely hit your images with a heat tool if you want to dry it quickly or you can just let it air dry both ways work great so for this bottom chameleon here i'm also going to be watercoloring him and i just went ahead and i added some some water to the image before i'm adding my color and you might notice that once i added my water first once you drop in that color it's going to spread into the water since watercolor reacts with water it's going to spread into that water you're going to get a softer look and it's really going to start moving on its own right away. So I put some yellow on the bottom, I'm putting some green on the top, and they're gonna meet in the middle and start to blend. And it's just a really fun way, a really fun technique, just to drop that color into that water and just watch it spread. So watercolor is really a, definitely a fun medium to work with. It takes a little bit of practice, if you are coloring stamped images with watercolor, something that I usually like to do is I like to emboss my images so that it holds that water in. That embossed edge is kind of like a wall. Now here is the last way that you can add color to your images. And this one you might not have thought of before, but this is honestly the way that I have colored most of my images before I had any kind of markers or anything. And it's just by ink blending. If you have a simple image like this chameleon, you can go ahead and just blend on some ink and you can even blend a few pieces or a few colors together 
and use several colors at once. So for this first little guy, I went ahead and I fussy cut him first, and then I added my color. You can definitely do this if you want to, you know, add little images fussy cut onto a card or different things. Um, most of us, if we're stampers, we already have the ink. So if you're low on a budget, you don't have the money to buy markers or colored pencils or all those other things, go ahead and try using your inks. Now this isn't going to work on every single image you might have, but little images like this, it definitely works. So I'm also ink blending on top of these chameleons that I have not fussy cut out. You can do this as well. You can color them first and then cut them. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of light blue and then I'm going to come in with some darker blue and just blend that out. And you can get several different tones on your images by doing it this way. Like I said, this is the way that I colored most of my images before I had anything else to color with, before I had any other mediums. And it's worked fine and it's a really fun way and a different way to color your images. So I'm coloring this last chameleon with a little bit of my light pink, and then I'm also going to come in on the top and add a little bit of a darker pink as well. So play around with your ink combinations, blend several colors together, and make some really colorful chameleons and colorful images, and just have fun with it. I think um, if you have a small stash, it's perfectly fine. Find new ways to use all of those things and just get creative, because that's what creating is all about. So you can also go in over your inks, add a little bit of detail with a white gel pen or different markers or pens or anything you have and just have fun. So I hope this video has kind of given you some inspiration, some ideas of how to color your different um, images in different ways. I hope you experiment with some of these different ways. It's really fun, really easy to do. Um, I'm gonna give you a look here of all the different ways that we've colored here at the end. We have ink blending. Um, we have, next I'm going to show you, just a second, uh, the colored pencils. If you have colored pencils, go ahead and use those. Uh, we also have watercolor. If you want the zigs or your own liquid wallet watercolor, those work fine too. Um, there's the zigs and then the last one would be the alcohol ink markers. So go ahead and experiment, um, you know, just play around with different things and definitely have fun. So I hope this video has helped you. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again next time. Bye.